Fabio, thank you very much to be here with us today and to share. The stage is yours. Go for it, man. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, for such an enthusiastic introduction. <laughs> So good good morning, everyone. Good local time for the for the audience joining us from abroad. Um, so I'm going to present here a, an overview of our um, methane to product program. And uh, CINI is is deeply involved with the energy transition toward um, a carbon free energy technologies, but we still don't look with the necessary attention for the um, reducing the carbon emissions of the chemical production industry. And uh, if you look around ourselves right now, we are just, um, we have materials all on our daily lives. There are ubiquitous, so they are just part of our lives with, and we just don't realize that all the plastics packaging, everything that is surrounding us right now, it's coming actually from fuel, fossil fuels. So we, 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 do, we do want to contribute it to contribute to reduce and, and make such a, um, a shift in this petrochemical industry because uh, as the, the International Energy Agency has pointed out, the petrochemicals are one of the key blind spots in the global energy debate. So, that's exactly where we sit in our uh, in our research at CINI, we, in which we have two main ingredients here. One is methane that is that is available, plenty available, and we also have the emerging green electrons coming from voltaic, photovoltaics, and eolic energy. And we have we have seen a lot of debates if we could. Uh, shift or, or displace the petrochemical process using electrochemistry. And this we, we put together CO2 reduction and, and, and such kind of uh, processes. And uh, our research and methane to products, it's, it's to use advanced electrochemistry for this methane conversion. Our target molecules, we want to use methane as a building block for molecules such as methanol or ethylene, for for as our target molecules for producing those target molecules and uh, when you look at the electrochemistry processes we are basically talking about solid state reactors and um, and just taking the solid oxide fuel cell as a, a technological platform for this as a as an example we have interesting advantage compared to the classical and uh, catalytic process for methane uh, conversion we, as we have a solid state membrane, as a solid state electrolyte, we can combine the reactions and product separations in a single unit. And we eventually have the possibility of cogenerating this, the, the C2 molecules that we want and electricity. And it's interesting because with the electrochemical potential, the electrical potential, we can basically tune and try to provide uh, more uh, reacting species instead of the gases uh, forms, so we can use the anions, the proton, the oxygen ions, which can contribute it to higher selectivity. So uh, just to, to, to situate everybody, we are, we are a team, we are divided in two institutions. We are a federal laboratory at IPEN in Sao Paulo, and also the laboratory for materials for energy at UFABC. And we have, uh, a solid background on fuel cells and hydrogen. We have been working in this topic for many years now, developing Brazilian technology for such systems. And uh, we also were deeply involved with using ethanol in such um, systems, producing energy and eventually other molecules. We have a long list of, pro long list of projects that we have carried out in the last 10, 15 years looking at this very challenging um, problem and that has put us in a several projects and, and, and research with different collaborators. I have to thank them. And uh, we also looking at, I saw yesterday Professor Rubens, all the debate actually brought also by Camila and Shell 
talking about the role of ethanol. And uh, we also have a, a very interesting expertise in converting ethanol to hydrogen. And uh, well, this is a very interesting topic. We see new people, newcomers joining this topic and we welcome them. We want to join efforts to carry on this research. But more importantly here is that um, those, this is the background that gave us the credentials to tackle this very challenging topic, which is the electrochemical methane conversion. And this is basically what we have been working on, our new materials. We need new catalysts, new electrodes, electrolytes to come up with innovative electrochemical reactor concepts. And that's basically what is our research about. And uh, what I want to show you here in this presentation is the impact and, and the outreach. What is the, um, the methane to products contribution to CINI? And I, our scientific and technological impact is, it's, you know, it's, it's translated into those new laboratories, new facilities. We, we have the student formation and uh, we are producing impact publications. And this is everything, boast, all these ingredients are boosted by, by our international collaborations. And uh, if you take a bird eye view of our projects, you, you can select some of the emerging talents, well, not only emerging, but some research topics that are common to, to some of them at least. And I, I picked up one of them here, which is the shape control nanoparticles and, and, and the controlled microstructures as well. This is beautiful material science that if you look, for instance, at project 10, we have this project which is based on composite membranes for CO2 separation. And uh, every time that we, we, we draw the schematics of this project, we, we show the concept, the idea of the concept, that these beautiful channels here in which one of them transport the oxygen ions to one direction, the other one transports the carbonate ions to the opposite direction. This is the basic principle of, of, of the system, the idea. But actually, when you produce such materials, we came up with the microstructure that is pretty random. So all directions, there is no a texture or a favored direction for, for such reactions. But our results shown yesterday by Dr. Sabrina Carvalho showed us that we are learning and we have produced already, you know, channeled structures of this porous, those are Syria-based materials that we can produce in this directional channeling uh, microstructure. This is very interesting using technologies such as tape casting for, for scale-up production. And, and that has a, a tremendous impact on the, on the CO2 permeance of those membranes. So we see here that we have this channel this textured microstructure we enhance the permeance of CO2, and that's the main, the main goal of this project. And uh, this shape control goes down to the nanoparticles, and we, and we have another example here of project 12 that is producing, uh, it's looking at the, um, the, the methane conversion at high temperatures by chemical looping. So we, we are taking advantage of the reducing properties, the, the very fast, oxygen ion transport in Syria based again materials and we came up with the we developed a very simple and, and scalable process a hydrothermal synthesis and we can easily control the temperature to to tune the shape of those particles that can vary all the way from rods nano rods that you see here and also nanocubes and uh, the interesting thing about those materials is that we have measured that the, when you look at the mass diffusion at high temperature of those nanocubes, they are much less active than the nanorods, meaning that such high temperature, they need high surface area catalysis, like all the typical catalyst process that we know, but uh, as they are carried out at high temperature and meaning over than, higher than 700 degrees Celsius, we, we do have the sintering of those particles with time during those reactions, we lose active surface area. And that's how we are looking at controlling a little bit this activity, trying to hold the activity, the sintering activity of such particles, nanoparticles in order to retain high activity at high temperature. 
And we see our newly, newly installed catalytic bench at UFABC labs that we do see a huge difference between the, the conversion rate of methane into C2 molecules here. And those are the, the effects of the initial shape of those nanoparticles. And we had very interesting debate that we hope to keep on, uh, on the uh, oxygen vacancies and concentrations with Professor Juarez. We are looking forward to interact with you and keep this talk. But also the shape control nanoparticles has been used for metals. Nanoparticles recently got a patent, a Brazilian patent on this topic. We, we, we have used, we are going to use this uh, kind of technology also to um, expose more active facets of the crystals for, for those reactions. Those reactions are semiconductors with metal, metallic nanoparticles that are basically doing similar process than water splitting. This is a water splitting coupled with methane. So all, all the, the, the radicals that we produce during the water splitting, they are supposed to activate methane in order to produce those methyl radicals and eventually produce ethylene with the, with the photoelectrochemical process here. Um, Another example that I have to say that basically is also represents uh, uh, some of our projects. We have six projects and uh, it's very interesting and I'm very happy to present you this, this situation on, on those uh, low temperature now reactors, electrochemical reactors. We have proposed the, the partial oxidation of methane to methanol using AEMs, the anionic exchange membranes. So the anionic exchange membranes are the core material, the solid electrolyte for a new emerging fuel cell technology, the anionic, the alkaline fuel cells. Those are, are very, there is a big hype on those fuel cells because they don't use noble metals. Reactions happen, they take up, they're faster in those uh, fuel cells. So in order, that will be like great cost reducing um, and they are expecting that this kind of fuel cell plays a major role in the future. So, but in order to come up with our carbonate ion conducting membranes, we use that as a strategy to start with the hydroxide conducting membranes. And that's very interesting because we had to come all the way from new labs to learn all the procedure for producing such materials and all the way to set up the measuring systems for our new reactors for the methane conversion. But on, during this very challenged pathway, we have to learn how to prepare those anionic uh, conducting membranes. And we are lucky enough to be in an um, in, uh, institution that has a solid background on, on radiation, because this is one of the, the steps of, for producing such materials we need to, to to use radiation in, in some polymer, engineer polymer, we, we make the grafting process and then we're gonna attach new molecules and these terminations in order to be the ones responsible for the ion hoping and transport in those membranes. And we, we succeeded in this, in, this, in this research, we produce those materials now and we already having, we have already um, showed that we are measuring such anionic alkaline fuel cells with um, power densities comparable to the, well, compared to the best results reported already. So uh, we, we submitted recently a paper to Journal of Power Sources, a very prestigious journal, and, and we got a review that, that it was very interesting to, to, to share here with you because it says that the, our article is very interesting, that we provide a detailed comparison that is long overdue in the field and that the range of experiments conduct on those membranes is quite comprehensive. So that means that we basically succeed in going through this pathway uh, of setting up this knowledge, going all the way to the research. And well, of course, with such a nice uh, reviews, we got the paper recently accepted for publication. And uh, together with the project that is dealing with the membranes, we have another project that actually take care of, takes care of our electrocatalysis. And, but those projects that this group led by Professor Almir Oliveira Neto, they already had the, the, the inoperando facilities that they have used for, for instance, ethanol, um, uh, other fuels. So they, they have a solid background using this kind of system so they could move fast and use their catalyst 
for testing the methane conversion at low in this PEM fuel cell like um, reactors. And they have found that palladium based, as compared to platinum or nickel catalyst, they have the best results for methanol production here. They have published this paper two years ago and it has been 12 times cited on, on Google Scholar. It was pointed as a top download paper here. And I have to point out that it's very interesting that both, both papers that I've just mentioned, they, they are basically in-house made. They are totally, all, all, all the authors, although we value very much our international collaborations, but we, we want to play, uh, we want to share a leading role of our collaborators. So that, that shows us that we have the capabilities of producing good science here in our methane to product division. And more, more very interesting, we, we welcome Ana Flavia now, she has just been invited as a new board member of ACS Energy Letters. This is a prestigious, high impact um, um, journal. And uh, it's very interesting because they just published a paper on the perspective of electrochemical oxidation of methane to methanol in membrane electroassemblies. So this is exactly what I have shown to you in the previous slides. And, uh, they point out as a is a very difficult problem. There's still a lot of way to go. But most interesting that from a, a handful of examples of systems using fuel cells, the few, the full fuel cells and not the, the, the typical electrochemical half cell studies, two of the papers that they mentioned and cited are the ones produced here at Methane to Products Division. So that's very interesting showing that our research has already an impact in the community and we are very happy to see that this this pathway of our projects going all the way from new labs new materials new reactors it's been successful and uh, I, I have to say that we are also contributing to expand CINI's outreach and we are looking forward for the collaboration with CSTAR and this is a, a, a FAPESP NSF joint project that is about to start and we are looking forward to, to enhance our impact, producing meaningful research, collaborating for our students and research exchange. That will be a very fruitful collaboration. I'm very sure of it. And I, well, to finish my talk, I have to thank all the team. This is a teamwork. M2P is a very solid group. And I have to thank you, our sponsors, my colleagues at CINI, saying that it's a pleasure to work with you. And um, thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, Fabio, to share this, uh, this uh, what you guys are doing. That's incredible. Uh, you show uh, some data, very interesting data, actually. And uh, the catalyst you used it was uh, platinum and, and palladium. Uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, is that uh, scalable or not, or if there any possible scale up on this? For for example, if we can have this in large scale, can you comment on this, please? Yeah, sure. Well, those those nanoparticles they they have been like I said to you, Hudson. We we have a long history on on fuel cells, and we have even some patents of. Uh, synthetic methods for producing such electrocatalysis here that we developed at, at EPEN. So, of course, scaling up those methods to we, we have we have uh, contact with some companies in the past trying to make some patents on the scalability of such methods. Yes, they are possible in principle, but and we we need to work on on, on that in order to develop you know, industrial scale, but it's definitely possible. We are not talking about rocket science here. It's basically uh, liquid chem, you know, liquid synthesis, those kind of methods. Yes. I, I, I agree with you and uh, I just uh, ask it to, to point out to everybody. Uh, Pablo, Professor Pablo also raised his hand. Do you want to make your question yourself? Yes, I have also a question uh, uh, about the, the, the catalyst. And I want to ask Fabio about the, the literature what you normally see because for example if you if you reduce co2 to methane the people use copper and sometimes they produce different uh, alkynes or alcohols so that means that those molecules are some, some kind of in equilibrium in, the, in those systems so why no why not copper and if i might if i might another 
is which are the main challenges for the solid oxide fuel cells and the uh, room temperature, fu uh, no fuel cells, converters in this case, electrolyzers, let's say, uh, because the conditions are really different and, and imagine that to control the select selectivity in both uh, devices uh, uh, have different challenges. Too many questions, Fabio. Sorry. <laughs> Choose one. Choose one. Maybe that of the catalyst. Yeah, I'm, I'm Sorry. Very, very happy to, to you know to, to see all those nice questions coming up. Uh, well, um, Pablo, thank you very much. But if, if you think about so there is we are not dealing with CO2 reduction here. So this is basically methane conversion that I showed you some results. And basically, what we have tried is like basically using the catalyst that we had in our labs that we know already how to prepare them and how and see like as a benchmark what they what do they can give us so as a, like a starting point because if you notice in this slide one of the things that the authors of this review paper published in AC energy ACS energy letters is that we are lacking of benchmarks in this field this is such a difficult problem and we still don't have a benchmark for this research. And that's exactly what we have to try to in-house. Come up with the palladium, platinum, and nickel, which is like standard materials that we can look at at this point. To, to, and, and then of course, we're gonna move up to more selective materials, trying to increase the efficiency of our reactors. But uh, I don't know if it's clear, but in our divisions, we, we in our, our research, we have both room to, I'm trying to move to your second question, at least to give you an idea. We do have different, fuel cell technologies here in, 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 in action. So we have the PEM fuel cells like when we are close to room temperature and we have the solid oxide fuel cells, which are much higher temperature. And, and of course we have completely different um, uh, challenges in, in each one of them. And uh, if you have a more specific question, I'll be more than happy than, than, than trying to answer that for you. Uh, can we? Uh, uh, Let's move to the other. <laughs> Thank you, uh, Fabio. Uh, my pleasure. Uh, oh, Rubens and Gustavo want to make a question as well. So I have. Uh, we have time for more one question. So one of the guys come on and well, ask your question. Well, Gustavo doesn't mind. Doesn't mind. Congratulations, Fabio, for our very nice presentation. Uh, let me ask to you one thing to you. Always that you are. Uh, uh, work with some material that you have carbon, like it's methane. Uh, we are, uh, let's say, in this situation to have coke coke deposition or carbon deposition on catalyst. How can you deal with, with it in the, the practical world? What's your vision about that? Or because it leads to, to the activation of the catalyst sometimes very quickly. So th th that's exactly the, the main challenge, especially in the high temperature process, uh, um, Rubens. Thank you for a question, but that, that's for sure. That's one of, so basically we, we know that we can have selectivity. We know that we can have eventually some good yields for those reactions. It's very challenging. Well, but indeed stability of those catalysts, it's a main issue, but the good reason that we have worked, especially at high temperature with ethanol, we have learned a lot about this kind of dealing with the carbon presence in, in such a kind of reactors. And that gave us some advantage in this sense. You, you, can, you can use, you know, in solar oxide fuel cell, people have already their tricks in order to, to deal with that. One of them, it's not to be applied in this, in this kind of technology because it's just mixing with water. But we can, we can play with those kind of... Um, active materials, you can add an active catalyst trying to set up the conditions for, for, for these reactions. But indeed, we face this challenge. This is one of the main challenge, how to give our systems stability and avoid coke formation. Okay, thanks very much. Thanks very much for Gustavo to allow me to, to, to make the question. Thank you, Hudson. Right. Thank you, Fabio. Uh, was incredible talk. Uh,